Hey everybody, this is Randy Brown for Cameo Man and Vlogging with Mr. Brown. Are, and these are the five types of magic audiences. Uh, now, there was this book, uh, How to Make a Night, an Action Film for $99 a little while ago. Uh, around It was made in the 1990s and it covered the five types of different actors. And, uh, you know, they had certain archetypes and I found all those archetypes to be true. And then I started doing magic and... I found that not only are there five archetypes of actors, there's also five archetypes of magic audiences, and I am going to tell you what those audiences are, and, uh, you know, starting from the worst to the best, and uh, how to deal with those audiences. Okay, so here we go. Uh, the first type of audience is called the Flatliners. And the reason they're called the Flatliners is because you do a trick for them and they're like, Oh, that's it? Hmm. Wow, that's crazy. You know, like, I call them Flatliners because they have no pulse. They have no excitement. They're dead. They're dead on the outside and they're dead on the inside. And they're just the worst people to do magic for because they're just, like, not impressed at all. They're like, eh, yeah, great. That was cool. Thank you. The second type of magic audience are the religious types. Now, religious people aren't bad per se, but uh, a lot of people view magic as sorcery and they want to have nothing to do with it. And they're like, hey, can I show you a magic trick? And they're like, no, no, we're good, we're good. You know, those are the type of people who believe, you know, that, you know, Jesus said all magic is evil. There are some religious types who think uh, hypnosis is magic and sorcery and won't even have anything to do with magic. And not only does the Bible not say anything about hypnosis, the word hypnosis was not even created until the 1800s. So I don't, I don't really see how you can be against hypnosis when even the word wasn't even around back then. The third type of audience is the Einsteins. And there are two subcategories of Einsteins. There's the fool me once people, where you do a trick for them, and they're like, wow, yeah, that's cool. And then you do another trick for them, and they're like, wait, you just did that. You just did that thing you did all over again. The way to prevent an Einstein is to never do the same trick twice. Now, this doesn't mean you can't do the same trick twice all the time. There are some magic techniques like the Baldacci Force and the Riffle Cut that you can do that over and over and over again and nobody will catch on. But if you're doing a complex trick, uh, you might want to ask yourself, uh, if I do this trick more than once, are people going to catch on? And then the second subcategory of Einsteins are the old pros. These are people like magicians, gamblers, pe card sharps, people who are really, uh, you know, have handled a deck of cards before and pretty much know all your tricks. And the way to handle old pros is, you know, an old pro, you can do a trick for them. And then if they're not impressed, you could ask, hey, why don't you do a trick for me? You know, I mean, like, you're a magician, you're a you're a gambler, show me a, show me a trick, and they'll show you a trick. And uh, sometimes they'll teach it to you, and you'll get a new magic trick in your arsenal. The fourth type of magic audiences are hoopers. And the reason I call hoopers hoopers is because they make you jump through a lot of hoops. Uh, these are usually typically mostly drunk people, but they can be like arrogant alpha males who like you know, diss your stuff and crap all over it. But here's the thing. If you impress a hooper, like if you're doing a magic trick for a drunk person and you still manage to pull a rabbit out of the hat and like super impress them, these are the people who will reward you the best. Because let me tell you, I've done magic for drunk people before and uh, I did this one trick for this one guy he went over to the bar and I thought, oh, maybe he's just talking with his girlfriend, ignoring me, or maybe he's complaining to the manager. He comes back, shakes my hand, and I feel something in his hand. I was like, maybe it's a note or like a bill or something, or maybe it's like, I didn't know what it was, so I took it, I opened it up, and it was my first $20 bill. And 
you know, like I said, if if you if you don't get mad at the Hoopers, if you keep your if you keep your uh, your sense of humor, and if you impress them, Hoopers are the people who will pay you the biggest, and that will be the most rewarding. And fifth, the last category are the boom boxes. And I call the boom boxes the boom boxes because number one, they're the best. And number two, when you impress a boom box, they will shout so loud that the entire bar or the entire restaurant will turn their heads going, what's going on over there? Like uh, one time I was at this place called the Tipsy Taco and I did a trick for these uh, two guys and one of them when I finished the trick shouted so loud that the bartender came over and he's like hey look uh, whatever you're doing you need to stop you know uh, you're being too loud and if you don't stop being loud you're gonna have to be asked to leave so that experience wasn't cool but the fact that he was so amazed and like shouted so loud was you know it's it's really fulfilling and you know when somebody enjoys your work and really loves it and enjoys it that's what you live for you know cuz you know I always say my job is to bring as many smiles to the universe as possible and when somebody is like oh my god like that is what I call the best night even if I didn't get a number even if I didn't get any money like if somebody goes oh my god oh my god like that is what it's all about. So there you go. My name is Randy Brown for Cameo Man and Vlogging Miss with Mr. Brown, and I will see you later, alligator. Alright, bye.